And so, yeah, uh, board backup. First off, I'd be remiss uh, if I didn't introduce myself for those who either haven't been to meeting in a while or uh, are brand new. Uh, I'm uh, Andy Denner. Uh, I'm a longtime Linux user and quarter of data. Uh, and uh, by day, I somehow write code, and by night, uh, now change diapers. So, uh, and uh, yes, uh, the big thing to call out here is this is the non AI generated uh, photo. <laughs> and also, uh, he is absolutely terrified of uh, Batman. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah. Uh, and then uh, the social media connectors, these slides will be up there uh, later tonight, as well as I'm uh, on, as long as Twitter keeps running on Twitter, as well as uh, uh, Mastodon sort of stuff. Uh, I'm equally not involved in either one. So uh, just take your pick and uh, at me and I'll probably respond in days, weeks, months. So yeah. Uh, so the, the whole premise of this is that, uh, let's see, get that I'm sharing that way there. Uh, that really in this world, there are two types of people, those who've lost data and those who will. Personally, I've lost data before and it sucks. Also, uh, USB uh, and smart, the, the hard disk notifications that they're failing, yeah, it, it isn't smart. It doesn't work. Don't trust them. Uh, one backup is no backups. Two backups is only one backup. And if you have about five or six, then maybe you're close to being uh, like S3. <laughs> but the other uh, big piece of adage here is it's 10 p.m. For those who are a little bit older, you know where your data is. <laughs> and for those who are a bit younger, uh, Google it. Uh, yeah, it was a thing uh, before my time, but the, the jokes still go on on the substance. Uh, and then, of course, the, the last one, since I do have an as at home, well, it's on the raid. Isn't that backed up there? There's a couple copies, right? Don't trust it. So uh, we're going to just go over a little bit of my journey uh, to getting today to the day where I am with my backup situation. And uh, first, I started off with uh, stacks of USB hard drives and manual intervention. And uh, the problem with that is, yeah, I'll, I'll back it up tomorrow. Okay. Data hasn't changed too much. I'll back it up next week. I'm busy. So not very often. It's not regular. There's no deduplication. De so uh, those five folders of MP3s that are all the exact same MP3s, yeah, that's all taking up extra space. And uh, not, not even to talk about the... Uh, uh, this file dot final, this file dot final final, this time I really mean it dot final, no du deduplication going on at all there. Uh, I had some NAS, I, I set up uh, NAS uh, and had, uh, it had some built-in automatic backups, but uh, USB is really slow and it has a potato for a processor. And there still is no deduplication now. It just basically takes a copy of everything, shovels it into uh, your USB drive. And even still, now we're talking about USB without smart again. And yeah, but we still have to remember to plug it with all of those problems. Uh, I did play around a little bit with RSync, and that, that worked great. Uh, but again, there, there's no compression, no deduplication. I can do file system based stuff, but uh, it uh, seemed easier just to outsource it to a uh, application that you can just schedule a crop job and magic happens. So uh, I landed on board. So let's just step step one here. Your simple recursive copy. It's easy. It's not automated at, at the time I was doing it. Uh, you can cron job it, whatever. And you're only one copy. And plus, it, it just takes time to uh, sit there and wait as it copies stuff. 
rsync. Uh, they, there's some great stuff here. Uh, we'll, we'll play around with it here in a couple minutes when we go into the demo here. You can do thing, fun things like diff verbose, uh, copy your data recursively. The archive mode will make sure that your uh, symbolic links are preserved, uh, permissions, all that stuff. Dev C will compress data over the wire if you're uh, transferring it via SSH or stuff like that. And uh, Dash H makes it a little bit more human readable than uh, the uh, robot doing our sync uh, over here, which was the prompt. <laughs> uh, they, there are upsides to our sync. Uh, you're only moving uh, the change data. So if your data is uh, off site, and or your disk that you're copying to is off site, you're only changing what uh, happened. Uh, so over the wire, you're somewhat uh, deduplicating it. But of course, when you land on the disk, it's still not there. Uh, it does have some better error handling. It will retry more than SCP or uh, copy or one of those things. It is fairly easy to use if you know the right magical incantations, but yeah. And uh, of course, you can do it over SSH. Downsides, well, I was still doing it manually. Yes, I, I could automate it, but I'm lazy with that stack. And so I did eventually come up with a script that uh, playing with hard links, essentially you just uh, hard link, uh, so on your disk, you you'd move everything, uh, you'd essentially just do a hard link to day one, day uh, two would then become, you, you shuffle everything over essentially one. So all of the data was only stored once on the disk. But the problem is there's, if that one copy ends up getting corrupted, you're out of luck because there is only one copy of it. Uh, so it was sort of a diff, almost like uh, backup solution. But again, they, there's if your hard disk goes bad, you're you're still out of luck. Uh, so I was shuffling two or three disks at that point, uh, storing one at my parents, one one in the uh, safe, etc. Still a good idea to do. Admittedly, I yeah, I think we all, all committed that sin once or twice. So on to board here. Uh, basically, it's a deduplication archiver that can do compression, encryption, all of those things. It's uh, far more space efficient because it's essentially doing a block store sort of on your disk. And uh, it validates that the, the chunks are actually correct. It can do uh, password-based authentication. So if you really care about your data, you have to type in a password and it's encrypted and all of those things. You have various compression options. It's cross-platform. Uh, basically, it's written in Python. So uh, uh, it's anywhere you can run Python, you can run it. And of course, the, the best is it's free in both senses of that term, uh, Libre and uh, Europe. So just a couple of terms that they do throw around here. Uh, uh, they, they'll talk about archives. Those, those are basically each individual snapshot that, that are stored there. Yeah, I know he's a little creepy. Uh, re repositories. Uh, and that's basically just the directory that the board stores all its files in. Uh, this prompt was uh, uh, robot reading a dictionary. Accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there, there are uh, several different encryption options. Uh, you set it uh, basically whichever one you want at uh, the repo creation. Once you uh, set your uh, mode, you can't change it. So uh, you, you have to basically expo your data out and then uh, add it back in. Uh, so pick wisely because uh, you're, you're kind of married to it here. Uh, so they, there are a couple different options here. You've got the, the repo key, uh, which is AES based. And essentially uh, it's uh, storing all the data or all the 
the, the encryption key and all of the stuff around that uh, in the same spot as your, your backup is uh, alone. Uh, which is, of course, why you want to have a password, because basically, otherwise, if someone swipes your, your disk, uh, they, they have all the keys in the kingdom, and encryption really doesn't help much then. Uh, because, see, if you have the key, yeah, you have the key. Um, so uh, the, the other option here is a key file. Basically, it stores part of the, the stuff that's needed to do the encryption in your uh, .config. Uh, work key folder, and uh, then the rest is stored alongside uh, your backup. So that that just is another spot that you want to make sure you have backed up because it's AES two fifty six uh, bit encryption. So uh, unless you're the NSA, you're going to struggle to get it to uh, decrypt. Uh, if you are running on a CPU that uh, doesn't have AES uh, encryption uh, hardware enhancements. Uh, you, know, you can try uh, the Blade 2 uh, versions of all of these. Essentially, it's uh, roughly equivalent uh, improvement, but it, it's, yeah, uh, depending on what you have, I think Neon uh, ARM CPUs will do a little better job at it if I remember right. It, uh, it's in the, the notes of the slide deck here. But uh, then if you don't really care about it being encrypted, but you just want to make sure that it's still all right, uh, you, you can use authenticated as an option. It uh, Basically, it just does uh, tamper uh, detection to make sure no one's mucking with your data. Uh, compression, of course, you've got all the, the stuff that you really care about. LT4, uh, which is super fast, but uh, not very good at compressing things, actually. Uh, PZ standard, which will do absolutely uh, all the way from super fast with no compression to uh, takes forever and super compressed. Zlib, half medium. And then, of course, LZMA, which is uh, slow but high compression. To install, it's real easy. It's in all of the package managers, or just use pip or pip3 because it's Python, so yay. And we're on to the demo time. And yes, that's a robot uh, demonstrating. <laughs> hey, I put a lot of effort into all of this here, uh, which yeah. so, because our point just crashed. Yeah. Okay. Um, which service did you use for the images? So actually Bing's uh, beta integration, uh, they, they give you like a hundred, uh, it's free fast uh, credits a uh, week. And uh, it's using the uh, a Dolly uh, uh, service, basically. So it's, it's easy, free, and uh, quick. So uh, let's just go ahead and fire up uh, Linux here. Calling that, it's concerning. I keep working. <laughs> Today is going to be a pretty bad day. Wow. The WSL or something? Yeah, something yeah, WSL. Yeah. Something has gone wrong. <laughs> no, it has an update. It's all good. Uh, but yeah, the last couple of times I've seen that, I had a whole bunch of stuff go missing after I went back in and my phone to install. Oh, and then well, let's try. I didn't have that bad of luck unless I closed it while it was running. Yeah, <laughs> it's running and not quite fast enough. You might have had the uh, do you, are you using the uh, the Windows Store WSL? I believe so, but yeah, probably downloaded an update in the background. I'm thinking mine broke because I went from the old install to the store install. Maybe I don't know. Is there a difference? Um, the store install gets pushed out updates. 
Oh, okay. I think, I think that's it. I can get some updates, not very often, but I'm using, I did whatever the DISM commands were. Yeah, and that's, I mean, you can always do it that way. And you can always, like, I don't, I don't see the point of having the store updated when you can just do apt update. I mean, but hey. Well, there, so I think, I don't, I don't know for sure about the store updates because most of my experience is with, with the one that was installed with DISM, but the apt update stuff updates the OS. But the win whatever Windows updates something on it, it's updating like the hooks it's using in the background. Yeah, mm -hmm. quite likely. But um, uh, so this is a WSL two. You, yeah, it's just you can, but really WSL just kind of tells you one or two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so opening back up my notes here so that I know what commands I'm actually running because. Uh, yeah. You're not the robot that read the dictionary? No, I'm actually a horrible robot. Okay, so to install here. If you're like me, you put everything in your speaker. Things are running horribly slow today. It doesn't make any sense at all. Okay. Well, it's going to be one of those days. So the definition of a demo. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay, so let, let's just try to see if whatever version still exists will work here. So uh, hopefully this is big enough for people. And let's go pseudo. Okay, so one of the cool things that you can do is you can actually mount your, uh, if you notice, uh, Fuse is one of the, the things that uh, it uh, depends on here. Uh, you can actually mount uh, old backups as a disk in Fuse and uh, interact with it that way. It's a read-only uh, copy so that you can copy it out that way. Uh, I mean, can you use the command line restore as well, but that, that just isn't really as interactive. So it does run. I swear when I was doing this in Podman, it was so much faster. It's not the page somewhere else. <laughs> Oh, is Something's eating my entire CPU. Change the core view. Change the core view. Did you know McAfee? <laughs> what? Oh, damn darn. McAfee was up there for a minute and I got real excited. <laughs> I thought we were going to watch McAfee get my Okay, <laughs> we did finish here. So. Yeah, just to validate that it works. There is a help. And uh, of course, oh, double dash. That's what happens when uh, uh, PowerPoint uh, swallows all of your double dashes and makes them, what are they, cam dashes? <laughs> but that's what I get for writing this uh, uh, in the middle of the night here. So uh, to, to basically start out, let's just make a couple folders with data. So make your uh, stuff. And let's go. Go. Go log. that file two and then let's make a file three of 
So we have some data that we want to back up here, super important. So we're going to back it up right next to it on the same disk because uh, it just makes life easier. So there we go. We just made a directory for all of our backups to be in. At this point, in theory, you'd be mounting that on like an NFS drive or something like that. So it was uh, back on RAID or somewhere like that. But and then copying it out to a uh, hard drive or to uh, S3 or where, wherever you want to move it uh, after you're done here. But okay, let's go ahead and uh, init uh, the uh, Borg. So Borg init. Repo key and then backup is the name of where we want to store all of our files and uh, password. We're just going to not put one in at all because yeah, I, I trust the world. So yeah. Uh, so uh, what you can do is if you want to make a backup of your key, I strongly recommend it. Man, work key export, it, it straight out shouts it out there that you should do that uh, and store that somewhere that you know won't like burn down in fire or something like uh, your parents' house or what, whatever, I, I don't know, uh, or your desk at work, take, take your pick. Uh, bathrooms at uh, golf courses, I mean, where, wherever. Uh, uh, so anyway, though, we've now uh, created a repo. And now let's go ahead and uh, make a backup uh, to store there. So org create uh, stats will tell us how we did it compressing things. Progress will tell us how uh, how fast it did it, and then you say the name of where you want to store it, which is in the that back. If you uh, double colon, and then what you want to name it, uh, the date seems to be a good one. So six dash twenty one dash twenty twenty three is a good name, and then at that point. Uh, you can say uh, that is stuck. And uh, one of the options you can do is at this point, if you want to use compression other than LZ4, uh, this is where you, you can call it out too. So And then what level of compression you want it to do. Five seems like a nice round number. You hit return here. Oh, I called the backup. And so there you can see it ran, it compressed. We did some good stuff. It would compress down small because of course there nothing was there. And uh, it was slightly deduplicated because we had uh, more than one file of the same thing. So let's go ahead and change some stuff in there. Uh, File one, and then go So we've had some data changed uh, through the time. Let's just go ahead and make another backup because stuff's changed and we it's really important. So let's just say that this was the 22nd because we're in the future now. So the backup happens. As you can see, uh, it's uh, stored the things that changed and 
it uh, still be duplicated really small because uh, not much actually really changed here. So now uh, we basically Word will happily fill up whatever space you have on your disk before it starts pruning the old ones out and getting rid of them. That, that's less than ideal and uh, it's our main disk that we're actually using here, which I wouldn't recommend using prod anyway, but yeah, let, let's just go ahead and clean up. We, we really only care about the last backup we have. So we can prune that. Uh, there's, uh, oh, uh, one thing we can do uh, next here, uh, you can actually see what archives you have. With just the command uh, list. Oh, if I actually spell. And as you can see, it listed that uh, we had 621-2023 and 622-2023. And of course, it uh, tells you what dates they actually were made on. And you can see I lied. So let's just go ahead and uh, get a little bit more info about them. Uh, so if we do info uh, and choose one of them. Three. Oh, is it a double colon? It is a double colon. A uh, single colon, I was trying to SSH to uh, the machine named backup. Oops. Uh, so yeah, here you, you see those same uh, stats that were put in four. And of course it's not really impressing much because there's nothing there to impress, not really. Uh, so, if you want to diff between, uh, see what changed in between the, the backups, uh, there's diff and 6.120.20. But let's actually do, there we go. And you can see that uh, file four was added and file one was deleted and there you can see why it isn't very much disk. So you, you can get that, okay, well, what happened here? And it's all fairly fast. And uh, you can, like I said, mount. Let's see if WSL actually does fuse well. I, I know uh, Podman absolutely puked on it because uh, there was no uh, fuse uh, module loaded in its uh, uh, so yeah, so uh, we're comparing it to the size differences. The original is 30 megabytes compressed. It's five times the amount deduplicated. It's four times that amount. Uh, so it's it does chunks. So they, these were terrible small files. And yeah, this is like the worst case scenario for backing up, but toy is toy data here. So. So we go uh, org mount. And oh, we need to make mount point for a yeah. Okay, so then org mount. And then if we CD into you can see each of your backups. And if we CD into 6421 stuff. And let's just say we want to wreck havoc here. It's a read-only file system, so we, we can't go monkey with things but uh, that, that just makes it really easy to get to your files when it comes time to backup uh, or uh, restore to stuff. So are those virtual then? Uh, let's see here, uh, a disk. Let's see. 
it's a fuse uh, file system, so it's fuse into that actual. Right, but like you the not all of the files exist in all of the backup dates because it's doing the magic in the background to do the the dedupes and stuff, right? So it's when you go to interact with the file that it just shows up. Yeah, it's just voodoo magic. Mm -hmm. that I like it. The, the bringing it all together, uh, much like how you do SSH FS uh, using Fuse or I think there's an S3 uh, instance of it or various stuff like that. Yeah, of course, it's user space, so your performance is going to be degraded. It's Python, so your user growth space in it, your, your experience is going to be even further degraded. But uh, you have a point in time backup now. You can go back and pick a specific day that you want your file in. Yeah. So let, let's say I've got eight or nine backups going here, and I, I want to prune this down because uh, number one, I don't want the lawyers to come in and say, hey, I. I want uh, the last 10 years worth of your data backups. Uh, we deleted them. Sorry, that's just the way we, we roll. So uh, you can have a great command here of uh, uh, Borg secure prune or Yep, here we go. Uh, so yeah, you can say uh, how either how many copies of it or uh, how many uh, days worth of backups you want to keep. And basically your command is prune. And then you can say either keep within the last five hours, keep the last three, keep the uh, last five hours, whatever you want uh, here. So Borg prune. Keep last one, and I forgot to say which. Oh, I, I'm in the wrong folder. No wonder I'm still on the back of my. Uh, I was wondering what's going to happen if you tried to print the back. Clearly, sitting here waiting to see what happens. Let's find out. Uh, Although, if you wouldn't tell me, there's one command I'd like you to run before you throw that because I'm curious of the structure of your backup structure. Would you mind just doing a find tilde slash backup? I'm curious what the files look like inside that. So, it really, is just collapsing them down into. Just, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Scares me a little bit. Same. Compressed. Lots or, yeah, I mean, it's been around for quite a few years. Uh, yeah, it, it, I'm not familiar with the store back at all. Uh, yeah, uh, here we can quick uh, pull up. So, okay, I don't need a sidetrack here. I just wanted to see what that directory looked like before you started the program. Yep. More than 20 GitHub storms. Yeah, I mean, clearly it's trustworthy. Uh, but uh, let's see here. Yeah, I mean, with, with a uh, great website like this, uh, uh, yeah, that probably will get you to yeah, get help. This should give you the history. Yeah, 10 of the sources. Yeah, it, it's been around for a while. And it's still getting uh, active uh, uh, commits. So, I mean, they. Yeah, it's so it's mostly all one person, which is a little more concerning, but. Any recent commits concerning well, fixed data loss <laughs> log or anything? Hicks bug or hypo could cause full data backup loss and corruption when you try to rebuild it. Well, it's likely not any works. Yeah. Duplicati I have been using for too long now. Yeah. Basically, every time that backup breaks, the whole thing just 
Yeah, I, I don't I mean, use that one before he gets rubbish. That and Borg have been on my list to try. I just haven't gotten around to actually mm -hmm. trying them yet. So but but if you're doing that list, I try. Yeah, let, let's try deleting it while we're sitting in here in the mouth just to see what happens because I'm sure this is gonna go swimmingly. Uh so Borg, uh prune. Uh, keep last one, and let's go till day back up. Apparently, it's locked, which that that's good. It is. I I that makes me feel good. I bet we have to unmount our backup mount. Let's just try. Yeah. Okay, so for so well, the director called block that roster. That's related to It'll leave the end out of official Linux fashion to be found. There we go. Okay, now let's try. So the thing about this is we now deleted that backup. However, we did not do any sort of cleanup at all. Uh, it, it just deleted the metadata around it. The blocks are still sitting around there. So at this point, we need to do uh, compact Or uh, sorry, here. Uh, oh, you need to say what you want to get back. Me? Serve in it, check E, extract, if green, let's see. So, going to delete the prune? Or... Uh, so, prune will delete the uh, X number of uh, copies. Where delete will just delete the one. Uh, but yeah, this should. Oh, maybe your version doesn't have it. Did it install the latest version? Uh, probably not, since I wasn't able to do an apt update since. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Um, so anyway, though, if you have a modern version rather than whatever mystery neat uh, version I, I've got, uh, can, compaction could uh, be run periodically, or they've now updated it and it's all rolled into one. Uh, but either way, I could see them doing either one because it, it's something that you want to run, but it, of course, does take time to run. Uh, but yeah, so that, that was uh, the, the uh, sort of driving it around and kicking the tires here. Uh, it took about 45 minutes to get around here. So that's about what I was shooting for. So yay stalling. Uh, <laughs> uh, and of course, the, this one I believe was uh, the robot waving goodbye. <laughs> well, 
What's the difference? I'll ask the ever horrific question. Does it have a so there is actually a UI? Uh, uh, I, I haven't ever used it, but uh, well, they've worked on a few, but yeah, apparently someone's written board warehouse. Which this looks absolutely terrifyingly trustworthy. Uh, yeah, so apparently this just basically runs the, the Borg uh, server. Uh, so I'm really not sure why you'd want to do this as a central thing. You want to duplicate your data. At, at the source rather than shipping it all up. It, it, this seems rather backwards. The, the other thing I will call out is that your performance is terrible if you decide to make a backup of all the files on your NAS by just uh, NFS mounting it and pulling everything across the wire to uh, duplicate it. Uh, yeah, that, that's it does finish, but uh, it, it's a great stress test of your uh, network. So if you want to have, does it, does it do Delta backups or does it only do full backup? So because it does deduplication, uh, really all backups are uh, Delta backups. I mean, it will go through and look at and figure out as that file changed. Okay. Uh, and as part of the deduplication, you're only going to be storing the the changes really. So then if you want to store off-site, do you want to make a repo that's an off-site repo and back up to it, or do you want to R sync? So what I would do uh, would be to you can uh, make your, your backup across to SSH. And so basically it just will store all of your data offsite there. Uh, that, that way you don't have to worry about, okay, is my instant, but I mean, you could do either way. Because rsync would uh, only shovel the, the stuff that changes. And then you don't have to worry about uh, encrypting and compressing your data twice. So, I mean, that, that would be sort of that, uh, Three, two, one sort of methodology of backup of okay, I've made my local copy, now I'm shoveling it off the site. Yeah, that's that's kind of my typical. So I've got for my setup now, I've got um a run on RAID so that I can kind of assign what disk things go to. I have one large disk that I have as a local backup. Um, and then I have a server running at my parents' house that has an external drive that I also back up to that one. They don't back up everything to that one because it's a single, it's a smaller drive, but I'm uh, just trying to figure out the best way to back up to both a local and a remote repository from multiple machines. One of them is Linux, many of them are Windows. <laughs> so the one nice thing about Word is since it is the Python, uh, it is a multi-environment uh, uh, option. Mm -hmm. And duplicati, I know is as well, but it's it's dot net, so it runs uh is it nano or, or you know, what's the what's the dot net? Oh, mono. Mono, thank you. Yes. Oh so Linux client, it runs mono. It's old dot net then. Uh, dot net uh, for probably, yeah. Unless he's made some major changes. Yeah, it's yeah, because now dot net four. Well, got it. Five is cross yeah. platform ish. Uh, there, there's some stuff that it's uh, not a full first class citizen, like for uh, WinForm like stuff. But well, it runs a web UI for its for its UI. It runs its own uh, web server, basically. Yeah, it's it's kind of an ugly option. <laughs> so one option for the 
offsite sort of stuff. I have used at tail scale before to do the VPN uh, sort of king making and then just shovel the data across VPN. So at that point, you either use like NFS to make the or, or sync or whatever. <laughs> and that way you don't have to worry about, okay, what is my parent's IP address? Yeah, I had to set up a permanent wire guard from their house to my house because they got uh, Metronet, which is behind a CG net. Mm -hmm. And so they don't have an accessible web address, period, at all. That was yeah. fun. That, that is, yeah. If you want to pay extra for it, yeah, but for what little they would have, I would have used it for them for it wasn't worth it. That's the nice thing about TailScale is it does do the, the net busting and all of the uh, king making for you. Yeah. What's free here, like 10 G or something? I think it's 20. Or maybe 100, I don't know. A ton of Yeah. Okay, I might have to switch that then because I've just been mucking with WireGuard on this thing that was not set up correctly and it's it's a pain. You have to make sure everything is configured properly before you get started. Okay, now just use a series of reverse SSH tunnels, call it good. Now, now I, I will say <laughs> that it's only semi free in the, the back of it. I think your server infrastructure. Well, most of the pieces, if you want to build your own from their stuff, they, they've open sourced everything you need, but the batteries are definitively not included. Yeah, I think there's like, there is an open source implementation of, the, of like the server side. Yeah. That's not official from them, but they don't intend to break it. So use it your own risk. Yeah, it's not terrible. It mm -hmm. works, but they, they're nice. Integrated bundled package. There's something to be said about it. I, I know it makes me hurt my teeth, but it, sometimes I am lazy at heart. But yeah, so uh, then, then the, the last part here that I, I realized I don't have slides for, uh, essentially what I have going on is I just have a cron job set up where it runs the script where it does uh, it runs the backup with uh, the name of it's just the date timestamp. And then I run a prune uh, 30 days worth anything that's more, more than 30 days old. Because by that time, if I haven't figured out it's missing, I need to miss it. Uh, and then uh, back afterwards just to uh, make sure that many things are nice and neat, nightly, and it just works. So yeah, uh, that that was the, uh, the the full demo here. Thank thanks for suffering through uh, the the demo gods uh, demanding their pound of flesh. And yeah, and now the the tomfoolery of uh, other Linux discussion can uh, start in. I'm going to stop sharing because apparently Zoom they've changed something and Zoom is being very very. Uh, uh, CPU intensive here. Yes, we should probably stop recording too, so I don't have to edit out people griping about stuff.